Good morning. I'd like to talk with you today about the Lord's Prayer. The words of the Lord's Prayer are probably the best known and recognized of all of Jesus' sayings and teachings. Although we do vary in our translations of one or two of the primary phrases, most worship services include the praying of the prayer as a part of the worship experience. Let me first of all call to your attention the use of the plural pronouns throughout the prayer. There is no singular pronoun used. There is no my used. The pronouns are always in the plural, our, we, us. The plural pronoun is used nine times. I want to say the prayer out loud with you in a moment or two so that we can have it in the forefront of our thinking and hearing. I invite you to say it with me as we say it aloud. However, before we do our saying, let me call your special attention to the word that I used just now, the word saying, saying the prayer. I kind of dislike the word saying because what we are really doing, I hope, is praying. And that's different than just saying. The prayer is not to be said or repeated or just spoken out loud. This is a prayer addressed to God and focused on him. We are not praying to one another. We may be aware that others are also praying with us, but we are not praying to ourselves, to each other, to one another, to the group or the congregation. Our prayers are directed to God and only to God. I'm reminded of a certain pastor and a story about him who he was ready to give the benediction at the close of the worship service when all of a sudden he remembered that he had forgotten to make an announcement about the fellowship dinner on Wednesday evening. So in his benediction, he included these words, Lord, help us to remember the fellowship dinner on Wednesday night at six o'clock where everyone is invited and welcome. At that point, of course, he changed the direction of his prayer from God to the people. We preachers have been known to change the direction of our prayers to our dismay when we realize, uh, realize that's true. But back to the Lord's Prayer. There's one phrase we need to decide on which, we, which one we'll use. Forgive us our debts, forgive us our trespasses, or forgive us our sins. In different versions of the Bible or different translations, we will find all three phrases used. When I got out my Greek New Testament, the New Testament was originally written in Koine Greek, the Greek word is translated literally debts, and debtors. Further study of the different translations is interesting and possible, and you may want to do it sometime. But let's use the terms debts and debtors in our praying. Pray with me, if you will, as I pray out loud the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Many of you are aware, and I've told the story elsewhere, many of you are aware that Beth and I shared in the praying of the Lord's Prayer each night. When her memory began to fail, we did the prayer in what I call echo fashion. I would say a phrase, and she would repeat it. We bonded in prayer nightly with this magnificent Lord's Prayer. We did it each night until her death on August the 12th of 2019. The other phrase that I have changed for me personally is, lead us not into temptation. I've had some difficulty with that over the years because I do not believe that God or Christ ever lead us purposefully into temptation. I do not see it true for God or for Jesus as the Christ. We are tempted within ourselves. We are not led into temptation by either Jesus or God. So I have adapted the phrase, guide me away from temptation, with which I feel very theologically comfortable. You may want to use that phrase. I think our religion always has to make good sense to us. And so that's primarily the reason that I've changed that phrase. Guide me away from temptation, because I believe that concurs with the way that God and Jesus Christ work with us. I'm not advising anyone to adopt this different phrase. I'm just saying that it fits into my theology and Christology of how God and Jesus work for me and with me. There are nine plural pronouns in the words of this prayer. And I believe that this is very intentional, extremely purposeful. Have you ever tried praying the Lord's Prayer using singular pronouns? Bill, might try that sometime. Like it would start out, My Father, who art in heaven, give me this day my daily bread. Forgive me my debts. No, it changes the whole thing, doesn't it? Jesus intends for us to be aware of all of the others in our world, not just my family, my group, my church, my denomination, my nation, my race, my color, my anything. Listen to the inclusiveness of the prayer and recognize, I believe that it's very, very intentional for us, very much so. May your praying of Jesus' prayer for his disciples bring you closer to God, the Father, his Son, Jesus Christ, and to one another. May it be so for you through the Lord's Prayer.